Foundations of Amateur Radio One of the regular topics of conversation in amateur radio, especially for those new to the community, is where to start. The sheer volume of available options is often overwhelming. If you've never encountered the complexity associated with this amazing hobby, the experience can be disheartening and even demoralizing. In my early years, I was results-driven, getting on air, making noise, logging a contact, adding a country, winning a contest, rinse and repeat, get better, do more. There have been numerous occasions when I came home from one of my adventures disappointed, sometimes bitterly so. That happened for quite some time, until one day I realized that the journey in and of itself is the reward. That might sound disingenuous, so let me illustrate. This week I set up an automatic beacon in my shack that can be heard by stations around the planet, letting me know just how far my signal can travel at any particular moment, using my own station antenna and local propagation. As projects go, it continues to be an adventure. As you might recall, I like low power operation. Truth be told, I love low power. The smaller the better, less is more and all that. I recently completed the first leg of a journey to set up a permanent beacon. For years I'd been dabbling around the edges. On the weekend, whilst I was in my shack, I'd regularly set up my computer and radio, set it to whisper beacon, and see what stations heard me. I couldn't turn my radio below 5 watts, so that's what I used. Before you start, yes, I could turn down the volume, but that involves math and I wanted a result. Now. It filled a gap using Whisper, a weak signal propagation reporter like that. For a while, I improved on things by having a receiver set up that monitored the bands all day, every day, and recently I turned it back on, with limited success. More on that shortly. What I really wanted was to see where my signal was going, not what I could hear. I received a few emails suggesting that a Zactec Whisper desktop transmitter built and sold by Harry, Sierra Mike 7 Papa November Victor, would be just the ticket. It's a little metal box with USB and SMA connectors. One SMA for the supplied GPS antenna, used for location and time, the other for a transmit antenna. USB provides serial for configuration and power if it's operating in standalone mode. Yes, you can operate it without needing a computer, and if you want, it does band hopping. After configuring it with things like your call sign and bands, you can plug in the GPS, your antenna, and power it via USB, and it will run as an automatic 200 milliwatt whisper beacon. That device in turn prompted a journey to discover a more appropriate antenna, since my current station antenna uses an automatic tuner that won't get triggered by this tiny transmitter. That caused an exploration in how and where to mount any new antenna, with a side trip into finding a specific anti-seize compound locally. To pick the mounting hardware, I had to get into wind loading, how strong my satellite dish mount might be, how to install and tune a multiband antenna. The list just keeps growing, and that voyage continues. I'm tracking the requirements with a project-specific checklist, just to make sure that I don't miss any steps, and have a place to document new discoveries when they invariably hit me in the face. So far, so good. The Whisper monitor receiver is currently connected to a generic telescopic dipole mounted indoors, which in the past gave me a much better result than my station vertical, so I should be able to keep both running. Next on the list is to construct a live propagation map for my station, then a way to switch modes on that map, so I can tell if it's worth calling CQ without going blue in the face. I'm also working on a Whisper transmitter for 2 meters and 70 centimeters because they are underserved in my neck of the woods. The takeaway from all this is that whilst there are many steps, and truth be told that list is growing as I learn, each step is tiny and doable. The only thing that separates me from someone who doesn't know where to start is this. I started. You can too. Anywhere. Doesn't matter. Pick anything that tickles your fancy. Start digging. It's a hobby, not a profession. Whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you excited, whatever you're interested in, pick it and do something. Anything. That's how you get anywhere in amateur radio. And open source. And life, for that matter. Just start. I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima, Alpha Bravo.